all the hypotheses work similarly well statistically and all have their drawbacks as I've laid out. Whichever one prevails, we can be sure of excitement and or controversy in the field of physics. I know those are two words that you intimately link with physics, excitement and controversy. <laughs> What's up you scholars of enlightenment? You'll remember that last time out we went over the functionality and operation of the dark matter seeking xenon detector. Well now it's time to look at the results of their recent exciting physics run and account for the fact that the xenon collaboration got more interactions than they bargained for. Looks like you bought more than you bargained for. <laughs> Theoretical measurements and modelling suggested that the Xenon one-ton detector should see a baseline background number of interactions represented by the solid red line. This is what we expected to see. And these interactions come from impurity decays, neutrinos that still get through to the Xenon, natural radioactivity of the detector materials, and other known sources. As you can see, the collaboration didn't observe anything above the expectation in the about 10 to 30 kilo electron volt energy range. And that suggests that Xenon One Ton has a good handle on its background modeling in this low energy regime. However, at very low energies, we see significantly more interactions than we'd planned for. It's too much, and I'll say no, it isn't. Between about one to seven kilo electron volts in the energy range, 285 xenon interactions were observed, and that's versus an expected number of interactions of 232 plus or minus 15. So that's about a 3.5 sigma fluctuation. Something that is very unlikely to happen simply by pure chance. So it's likely that something has happened to cause this, either a new interaction, a background, equipment failure, something has occurred. So why are we seeing this excess at low energies? Is it dark matter? Well, I'm going to be careful not to jump to conclusions because this is Grand Sasso and I've been bitten by Grand Sasso before and they're faster than light neutrinos, which turned out to just be a loose wire or something similar. Yeah, no this wire jokes. Did I say anything? And he's trying. I didn't say anything. Rip in a chat. Could this be a similar issue or maybe a threshold effect where the detector operates differently at very low energy, close to its lower energy cutoff? That's a potential reason. Um, Xenon collaboration analysts are looking at a host of possibilities for this excess. But there are some that are more exciting than others. I'm so excited. This new signal could be a new, unanticipated and unmodeled source of background. That would be a boring outcome. It's a new decay in the detector material, for example. Or it could be a point to new physics beyond the standard model that we didn't anticipate in our modeling for the background. This would be an exciting outcome, so to speak. So there are three hypotheses that the Xenon analysts are looking at. The first one being the tritium contamination hypothesis. Boring. So on the new background side, analysts have hypothesized that the anomalous interactions may be caused by tritium contamination in the detector. So tritium is a heavy isotope of hydrogen and it decays to helium via beta decay and therefore spitting out energetic electrons that can interact with the xenon and leave an interaction signature. The energy spectrum of the electrons produced by tritium beta decay is very close to the energy range in which xenon one ton recorded its excess. So tritium decays are a good candidate for our excess. And it would only require a tiny amount of tritium contamination, about one tritium atom for every 10 to the 25 xenon atoms to account for this new signal. And tritium could simply be trapped in the detector materials. 
if we apply this tritium hypothesis and add an appropriate guesstimate level of tritium contamination to the background fit, we see that we can fit the observed excess much better. So much so that the excess is essentially accounted for with a statistical significance of 3.2 sigma. So the tritium hypothesis fits the data well and would allow us to explain, to some extent, the data. However, this hypothesis isn't without its problems because there are currently no independent measurements that can confirm the presence of tritium at the required level in the xenon one ton detector. So we can't directly confirm this hypothesis. I will neither confirm nor deny the facts of that story. And that leads us on to the more exciting possibilities because there's a couple of new physics phenomena that could also account for the statistical excess with excellent statistical significance. One of them is an enhancement to the neutrino's magnetic moment. In the standard model of particle physics, neutrinos are massless and therefore they don't have a magnetic dipole moment. However, recent observations of neutrino oscillations, where neutrinos can spontaneously oscillate back and forth from one type to another, tell us that neutrinos must have mass and that the standard model is incomplete and needs to be extended. The corollary of these mass measurements is that neutrinos are expected to have a magnetic moment of around 10 to 20 mu b, where mu b is the Bohr magneton. However, if the magnetic moment is, in fact, higher than the expectation, the likelihood of neutrinos interacting with the xenon at xenon one ton at low energies would also be increased. And this greater rate of interaction could be what we're seeing in the xenon and in our excess at low energy. If we apply this neutrino magnetic moment enhancement hypothesis, try saying that quickly five times, we again see that we can fit the observed excess much better. Indeed, with the same statistical significance of 3.2 sigma that we saw with the tritium contamination hypothesis. However, this hypothesis again raises a red flag. Assuming such an enhancement to the neutrino magnetic moment would be in conflict with previous neutrino magnetic moment results. Currently, the most stringent direct detection limit on the magnetic moment of the neutrino is less than 2.8 times 10 to the minus 11 Bohr magnetons, and that's from Borexino. Indirect constraints on the magnetic moment of the neutrino also exist, and these are derived from the cooling of globular clusters and white dwarfs, which produce vast amounts of neutrino and therefore give out energy. And these results give an upper limit for the magnetic moment of the neutrino of order around 10 to the minus 12 Bohr magnetons. So if the excess observed in the xenon one ton detector is due to an enhanced neutrino magnetic moment, stellar models would need to be changed or updated. The astrophysicists are gonna be mad. Do you know what we do here? My section? Sir, yes sir, I have an idea. Whoa, sir. whoa, whoa. Let's say you have no idea and leave it at that, okay? No idea, zip. None. If we had an idea about what we do, we would not be good at what we do, would we? We would be cunts. Are you calling us cunts? Another exciting possibility to explain away the excess in our detector is the existence of solar axions. The axion is an extremely light, zero charge, zero spin, theoretical, because we haven't seen them yet, particle that was postulated to clean up the fact that the strong interaction of particle physics does not violate the charge parity symmetry. This is a little bit beyond the scope of this video, but for a great explanation, see the video above. Axions, if they exist, are likely to have been produced in prodigious numbers in the Big Bang. So in addition to solving the strong CP problem, axions are also well-motivated dark matter candidates because cosmological and astrophysical bounds on the evolution of the universe require their mass to be very small, typically a few kilo electron volts. So there would be absolutely tons of these tiny particles everywhere in the universe. So they're a well-motivated dark matter candidate. So 
Axions could not only clean up the strong CP problem and the related non-existent electric dipole of the neutron, but also the irritating issue of dark matter. Indeed, the axion cleans up so much that it was named after the axion cleaning detergent. Um, and it's, so, what, it's what we always do in particle physics. If we're stuck, we just say, it's there's another field. particle there that we haven't seen before. So um, it, the, same, the same as we did with beta decay, right? We just said, there's a neutrino there, which explains why yeah, so the you, energy distribution is all off. Um, so and I have... It turned out to be wrong. So it was named, the axion particle was named after this, named after the uh, dishwasher detergent. Um, you can't get this in the United States anymore, but you can get it in Mexico. Um, that's where I got this one. So, it, because it cleans up the strong CP problem. Is so, that true? Or have you just yeah. made that up? No, that's yeah. right. That's, that's true. true. Who says us physicists don't know how to have fun? It was me! So, where would these axions be coming from so that they interact in xenon one ton? Well, a little bit of a warning first, because it should be noted that any axions observed in the xenon one ton detector would not be dark matter. They wouldn't be axions from the start of the universe, primordial axions, but axions that are currently being produced by the sun. So any detection of axions at xenon one ton would be evidence of new physics, but unfortunately not evidence of dark matter. Sorry. On account of the cosmological and uh, universal evolution mass constraints, dark matter axions produced in the early universe are simply too low in energy to be observed in xenon one ton. However, models predict that solar axions produced in the sun would emerge with, and in turn deposit, energies in the killer electron range in xenon one ton. And this is the precise energy where we see the excess in our data. So an observation of solar axions, as I say, would be evidence of beyond the standard model physics, it would be something new, but it would not by itself be sufficient to draw conclusions about axionic dark matter. But it's still good, right? It keeps axions well and truly in that dark matter lottery. Your numbers are lucky though, am I right? I hope so, I hope so. Can I ask you, if you won all the money, what would you do with it? Bunch of hookers and cocaine. Oh, okay. If we apply this solar axion hypothesis, we again see that we can fit the observed excess much better. Indeed, with an even higher statistical significance of 3.5 sigma. So assuming solar axions of the cause of our excess fits our data best. However, again, this hypothesis has its problems. Axions have not yet been directly observed in dedicated experiments like CAST, the CERN Axion Solar Telescope. So it seems presumptuous to assume they are the source of our xenon one ton excess. So to sum up, assuming that solar axions are interacting with our xenon helps us to fit our data the best. And it gives an exciting hint towards potential beyond standard model physics. However, all the hypotheses work similarly well, statistically, and all have their drawbacks, as I've laid out. Whichever one prevails, we can be sure of excitement and or controversy in the field of physics. I know those are two words that you intimately link with physics. Excitement and controversy. Controversial. Controversial. So, when will we know which one has won? When will we get clarification? Well, unfortunately, no time soon, because Xenon One Ton has been decommissioned and we'll have to wait for its big brother, Xenon N Ton, to begin operation. Xenon N Ton will have an active volume of Xenon three times larger, meaning that more interactions can be caught, and an anticipated background level an order of magnitude lower. Combine those two together and we have a much greater sensitivity. We can get a much greater significance to any statistical excess. And it should help us to clean up this problem. Unfortunately, we're going to have to wait a couple of years to see the results. When, what, what would be the timeline for, for getting um, clarification and, uh, and a, and a a firm resolution to this 
to this excess? What, 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 what are the next steps we could expect to see in terms of analysis and results? I think conservatively, I would say two years, uh, yeah. conservatively speaking, uh, then maybe could be less than that. Uh, uh, but something like that. Uh. However, take heart, because however long it takes, I'll be there to demystify the results for you. After all, I'm on the Zenon approved journalistic mailing list now. <laughs>